folks, and welcome or welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima, I'm again, and this podcast was brought to you, among others, by Emil Gorgis, a Tokyo real estate agent who specializes in serving international or mixed nationality families looking for the perfect family home. So Emil's an Australian. He's been living here in Japan for the past two decades, eight years of which he's been actively buying, selling, and managing real estate properties in the city, on behalf of his own family and a great many happy clients. And he also acts as a mortgage broker on behalf of his clients. So his company has a dedicated loan officer in many of the Japanese mega banks. And if you're a regular listener, you probably already know him from our JREP, the Japan Real Estate Experts panel sessions. So you're probably already aware that the man is an absolute fountain of wisdom on all things related to real estate in Japan and in particular to family homes, the greater Tokyo metropolitan area and mortgages. And most importantly, he's incredibly generous with his time and advice, which he's more than happy to provide at no cost or commitment to anyone asking. So if you've been thinking about buying your home in Tokyo, but you've been sitting on the fence for a while, or if you just want to have a chat in English with a real expert, drop him a line on emil.gorgis, that's E-M-I-L dot G O R G double E S Emil dot Gorgies at Tokyo Realty dot JP. Hit him up today and start exploring your options. All right. And today, as promised, introducing our brand new JREP panel member, Blanca Kobayashi, Vice President and Co founder of Arc Reform, which is a bilingual renovation and design company based in Tokyo. I'll let her introduce herself and the company in her own words. But obviously, a super worthy addition to the panel since the topic of renovations, repairs, and rebuilds does come up time and time again in our discussions, as well as in your questions to us in the various channels you're tuning into the Japan Real Estate Podcast and Show from. So, we talk about exactly these topics today and many more in this first session. What exactly is the difference between a renovation and a rebuild? When can a rebuild be done legally and what it includes? what permits and approvals are required for various types of work done. And we also talk about redesigning and reshaping home layouts. So opening up smaller rooms into larger open spaces, installing insulation uh, in Japanese homes, the differences in cost of renovations done on wood versus reinforced concrete or mixed material structures, how to renovate a short-term space for maximum profitability, and some other off-topic stuff like renting spaces for photo shoots and other commercial purposes, the relocation of refugees and potential for revitalizing rural areas, countryside living, mandarins, mushrooms, goats, and the usual stuff that tends to come up whenever Matt Ketchum joins our conversation. So please give a warm welcome to Blanka Kobayashi, our brand new member of JREP, the Japan Real Estate Experts Panel. Enjoy the conversation, and I'll see you again on the other side. Okay, Zeb, you can kick off. All right, okay. so we're back with the Japan Real Estate Experts Panel, JREP. And uh, we've got a special guest on today, but before we introduce her, we'll just do a quick round of introductions of the usual suspects, um, because ours is way shorter. So go, Tracy. <laughs> Thanks, Ziv. So I'm Tracy. I am the Mimpaku specialist. I've been doing short-term rentals in Tokyo for the last 10 years. Um, I have also started up a consulting company, so I help people maximize their profits and get booked in a crowded market without discounting. How's that for an expert statement? Um, that was brilliant. <laughs> it's well practiced. So, uh, so Matt, you're you're up next. Yeah, I'm Matt. Uh, I'm one. Matt Ketchum is my full name. I'm one half of Aki and Inaka, which is a real estate consultancy that specializes in all of those abandoned houses and bowling alleys and farms. Oh, and God. there's bowling alleys. There's there oh, used to be one in Aki. I don't know if it's still there because I haven't gotten a request for it but they exist uh yeah so we help people find the viable options amongst all of the very much not viable options out there in uh rural japan and that's nationwide too so not just within tokyo um but yeah so if you want a cheaper house come at us Awesome. And I'm Ziv Nakajima again, and I do investment properties and holiday homes anywhere in Japan, whether the uh, buyer is a resident in Japan or living overseas, we can handle everything, purchase, management, sale, 
we do everything on their behalf. And Blanca, give us the spiel. Yes, hi guys, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Blanca Kobayashi and I'm the co-founder of Art Reform, which is newly um, newly founded uh, renovations company uh, in Tokyo and in Chiba. And uh, we offer bilingual services, which is one of our specialties. Uh, we basically help uh, not only the Japanese speaking clientele but uh, foreign clientele to understand uh, everything about the renovations and what can be done what cannot be done uh, we also create customized uh, furniture for businesses we actually do the whole setup of uh, of businesses so if anybody wants to open a office store a restaurant and they are getting the business you know in japan it's often a skeleton so if you get the skeleton, there's nothing in it and we can build the whole thing for you. Or on the contrary, if you are relocating from your current office or store, we can bring it back to the uh, requested state by the owner or the real estate agent. Oh. So back to the skeleton and, and take care of everything for you. And do that in English if need be. That's really That's English. Or what other, how many other languages you speak, Blanca? Well, uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> you must be Dutch, right? Whenever I meet uh, anyone from the Netherlands, they say, oh, I speak just eight languages. No? Yes, <laughs> I don't speak Dutch, but I have a girlfriend who does. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, but yeah, well, we usually, we usually deal in, in English, but truth to be told, our company uh, employs in general people from over 10 countries. So any, anything can be handled as... Uh, Barely any language that uh, we don't we don't talk we don't speak in our company. But so you're, you're, Czech, though. you're Czech, though, aren't you? Yeah, Czech, yes. yes. That's mm. very cool. So yes. I, I, I've got a first question. I'm, I'm sure we'll have a few, but I've got a first question. Um, so what kind of like where's the limit to the renovations that you do? Because we always keep talking like people contact us and they say, can this house be rebuilt? And we say no. But if you leave the concrete base in place, it's just yes. officially a renovation. It's not a rebuild. So yes, we just did that. Too, we actually just did that. Uh, our very first project was a complete renovation of an old uh, residential house uh, where the family lived there for about. 25 to 30 years and uh it was one of those really you know run down houses and we did oh, a complete <laughs> we completely yeah, Matt, Matt's paying attention <laughs> yeah Matt we can do your Akias too so yeah, we yeah I'm sure basically made it to look like a new house we've gutted the whole thing rebuilt uh, even uh positions of uh, of uh, the kitchen for example we built the whole inside differently so you know we gutted the whole thing and now it's a new house it only they just have to still do the front um the facade but what does that mean for the what does that mean for the regulations um i guess that's a we talk a lot about the regulations um and so in tokyo just if anyone's watching there's there's a certain width of width of road if the, if the road is too narrow you're actually not allowed to rebuild um yep. but if you're taking it down to the concrete like you, i think you have to leave one beam or something no we didn't take we didn't take down the house itself but yep. we basically stripped everything from the inside yes so oh, okay. Was, so you so left we, the outside. Yes, shell. we left the outside, and we just gutted the inside. Do you do you need to um, uh, do you need to actually submit something to the ward office that you're going to do that? No, um, no, not for that. No, interesting. Not for, not for that. Uh, we and then this one was a house standing on its own. Sometimes when we like our next project or one of our next projects is to do the same, but with a mansion in Tokyo. Oh. So over there at that point, you have to submit the plans and it has to be submitted to the, um, you know, to the mansion uh, kind of like a committee, even though the people that are uh, ordering the renovations are owners, but because it's a mansion, it has to be submitted, and then you have some regulations. But and then they need to also approve the dates and times you're going to be working and all that sort not, of stuff, right? Yes, not only that, but they have some things that you are not allowed to touch. That sounds uh, like a pain. <laughs> and, and and things like that. So you do have to when it's a mansion, you do have to uh, inform 
inform the uh, the company that the management company that that's what you plan to do. They look at it and then they tell you yes, you can, you cannot. So kind of so you don't uh, also interrupt the structure of the of the mansion. But with self standing buildings, as long as you are not tearing it down and building new one, you actually do not need uh, you don't need to apply. And we do not build from scratch. We we renovate. Mm, so you're, you're knocking down kind of as well, knocking down kind of cosmetic walls as yeah. um, addition. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I'm curious what kind can I can I ask a question? Of course you can. No, 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 you you don't get to ask questions. <laughs> um there was there was one place that comes to mind out in Akia, out in um uh Sagamihara, uh near Fujino, actually. And it was a relatively new build too. It wasn't it wasn't kind of a rundown Akia. Um and the thing it was one of these in just exceedingly frustrating building because from from the outside it wasn't it wasn't awful i mean it was really pretty much a box so like so far as you know looking interesting eh, probably not but i wouldn't call it an eyesore um but then i got on the, we got into the into and we had the floor floor plan blah, blah, floor plans prior to this so we had an idea of what to expect but you know, looking at floor plans and actually getting in there and seeing what the floor plan looks like in actuality is are two different things. And th this place was just, I mean, it was almost entirely diagonals, um, oh, include, wow. including entry rooms with shoji. So like you would get the bedroom specifically yeah. uh, had two shoji that intersected at the corner, right? Yeah. Um, which was odd. Um, and there were there were a number of other like there was a designated kid space that was right next to like the bannerless stairway <laughs> and just a bunch of really wacky things that were just oh my goodness who designed this so I'm curious like are you when you're doing the renovations that you're talking that that you do do um, are you renovating kind of more typical like okay this makes sense but you just want to renovate it structures or are you getting in there and like almost being like a medical doctor and saying right oh, now oh, we need to excise this yes that's for example what we what we are doing right now i'm, I'm going through a plan right now uh where we actually need to do a lot of medical you know cuts and uh, and adjustments and stuff you know awesome. uh, build new, or <laughs> implant new organs implant new organs uh <laughs> and all that stuff you know everybody is different we try to work with the customer because of course you know what my uh my ideas are different our japanese uh, uh managers and staff ideas are different and the customers ideas are different so we kind of try to put it together so most importantly they like it mm -hmm. because it's not gonna help if i like it or you know uh, our company likes it if the customer doesn't feel comfortable in it but you know with walls we do realize there's a lot of uh walls that are like rooms that are made small or were built small but right now people do not want that so uh, when they ask us you know can you knock this down or can you move that wall can you do this uh then you know we bring our engineer there he checks uh, for the structure what mm -hmm. can be knocked down what what you know how it can be changed so it's more of a modern or nicer style because uh the older japanese houses or apartments they do have a lot of unnecessary walls that create a small cubicles and and nowadays nobody likes that what's your background blanca how did you get into this kind of work <laughs> i don't have that background at all you know as i said it's funny because uh i'm i'm creative myself and i we did a bunch of our house renovations ourselves we basically did everything ourselves we only got a reform company for the bathroom because that ended up being a little bit to, that would have been a too big uh, a little bit of too big of a job for me but um we've done a bunch of things ourselves and uh my background is actually more of a finance and marketing <laughs> okay so i'm not a builder at all uh, we, we met because um blanca was also doing short-term rentals um back yes. in the day so that's, we, that's how long we've known each other in mm. we used to do short term we are business people uh so entrepreneur yeah yes mm -hmm. so we i've met tracy when we were doing short-term rentals in tokyo we used to own a hotel uh, hotel uh, facility in prague in czech republic uh some time ago uh but we we came into it for the business opportunity because we saw uh we had the business partner who is in the industry for i think 15 years now 
So he is very experienced and he wanted to cooperate with us. So, and we wanted a service that uh, does not forget about the foreign community. Mm. So we, we are kind of bringing more of the uh, knowledge of the foreign community. We are bringing uh, our side from, you know, how to run the business. And he brought in the knowledge of how the Japanese uh, work, how the Japanese side of uh, real estate works. Well, Blanca, that's that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, that's very similar to how our business with Aki and Inaka started. Um, but generally speaking, I'm also just really kind of over the moon with uh, initiatives, efforts, new companies and things like that that do kind of say, hey, you know what? We're not all real estate agents or engineers or a lot of these companies just tend to be very, very siloed, yeah. which of course, you know, has its benefits. But at the same time, when it comes down to, like you said, finance, marketing, PR, promotion, like the other sides of business, uh, often enough, there, there are things that end up coming up short. Um, and so yeah. hearing that you have, you know, you and your business partners kind of saw Okay, yeah, we're not, you know, we're not the renovators, but we do see that there's a market here that isn't being served for this, that, and the other reason. Yeah. We think we can address that if we work with this partner. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. good work. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, my husband's been in the business in Japan for 30 years. So uh, he's also not Japanese originally. He has Japanese passport now. But mm -hmm. he's been here 30 years and he's been running business here for 30 years. And um, so we just saw an opportunity there and a gap that, can be filled and should be filled. So we wanted to fill it. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me, what did, Blanca, what do you do about things like, you know, insulation? One of the biggest things that houses, especially, you know, 20, 30 year old houses here have is the insulation issues. And that's a lot of, a lot of the reasons why the, the, how, the rooms were so small was because people would only heat uh, yeah. you know, single rooms. How easy is it? have you found to to actually retrofit some decent insulation and does it how much of a difference does it make to things like ongoing costs of um you know heating and cooling etc are there anything to, sort of new that new that new technology that can be yeah. employed in these old houses to make them more you know more efficient to be honest we have not done that yet uh, like the whole you know like uh, as the check person what we do we basically put insulation on the on all the walls before you put the plaster and you put the wallpaper and here in japan uh, they don't really want that we we have not had a client yet that would actually request for that because they they simply don't they don't want that they would tell you okay they would now use a better system of windows and more focus on so the air doesn't go through the windows as it used to. But I am yet to meet a client that would actually want to insulate the house both from the either the inside or on the outside. Because in Europe, when it's really cold, uh, we have double insulations on houses. <laughs> Do you think and it would make sense to have like insulation education seminars? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Over the yes. course of a year, you can save this much money just by sending spending this much. They but can do that. When we were renovating our house, the um, the renovation company did mention that they can do that, so they can actually insulate the wall. But they just gently steered us away from that and towards the double pane, uh, triple pane windows, just saying, oh, it's gonna, just going to cost too much for a house this old. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah, so we, I am yet to meet a client that would want that. So uh, when I meet one, Tracy, I will I will get back oh, to you. Okay. Well, well, I mean, I just noticed, I mean, we've now clicked over into April where, um, you know, they have just announced that, you know, that, that electricity bills are going up yeah. for, for everybody. And, uh, you know, Japanese, Japanese traditionally have not really been very focused on, you know, keeping, keeping electricity costs down. It's just like, you need heat, let's just put a, a high, you know, like uh, air conditioner, a reverse yeah. cycle air conditioner, which is so inefficient. Um, yeah. And it uses up so much power. But, you know, is this something that could, you know, could be at the head of the curve of uh, renovating houses? Yeah. Yeah, I think it will be something uh, people will want to start addressing how to actually preserve heat and and create those. So, uh, as uh, as Matt said, maybe we should start doing education for people. Uh, I, I like the idea of as yeah. much as I'm honest outside of business, like I'm I'm very much not interested in 
<laughs> in insulation. Okay. It's but, very, very well, important because yeah. right now, you know, we just got out of winter, so it was cold. But and cold. we are at the we are at the stage that right now you do not have to use with a cooler. You don't have to use heater, but the cooling sy uh, season is coming soon. We're going to be so hot. And so now people are going to start using air conditioner and it's going to, you know, uh, that's going to be a big cost again. So I think it's actually worth, uh, worth to address how to plan idea. the house. And also, because th those are one of the things that I think about in a manner, not so much of, oh boy, you know, sales, but like these are things that just kind of should be done. <laughs> And if there was a larger, um, I don't know, or a more strong a mindset that it was more strongly attuned to or accepting of, you know, standard insulation practices, that would benefit like just most of the country, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, sales processes, obviously energy production. I don't know, maybe a few less people would die of exposure because these things all come to mind when how many yeah. people die in their sleep in winter because it's just so cold no in legit like up north, I used to live in, think about this up north yeah. i used to live in iwate right those right. things it went down to like minus 25 in in winter wow. uh yeah that was i distinctly remember what i would do i had single pane windows right i would literally <laughs> take so saran wrap and duct tape right and make a pocket in my windows and then stuff that with the 7-Eleven plastic bags that I got <laughs> in, in order to create insulation, right? Oh my goodness. Now, that is, I think that is like the next kind of, uh, uh, you know, steps people will have to take in Japan to think because, you know, nobody's been worried about it till now, but with the, with the prices going up so significantly, you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I have to think about, like, you know, uh, utility costs because, yeah. you know, in my houses, of you know, short-term rentals, the utility bills, you have to really budget a, a double, at least double what the average domestic use would be. And you've got to really build that into your costs. And so with this, my bills are going to go really high. The reason is, is that, um, you know, if anyone's looking at getting into short-term rentals, is that the guests, you know, they, they're they not really focused on the domestic living side of it. They just want to okay. go and live their life and do what they're doing. And they don't remember to turn off lights because they're not paying the bills. So they don't remember to turn off lights or it's like turn in off a air conditioners. Mm. It's yeah. like in the hotel, you are not worried about turning off the air conditioner, no, you know, putting off the light. You do that if you are brought up that way. So putting off the lights is kind of in your nature. Mm. Yes. then you do it automatically but a lot of people's actually not used to that so then you know the lights are on all the time mm. i i saw that i you know we had our our rental only for i think like two years mm -hmm. and uh yeah i saw that it was it was and it would drive me it would drive me crazy yeah how yeah. do you for a whole day and you don't and you don't turn off your air condition like why well, it's it's just because they're folk, but you know the the focus is really getting out the door and where am I going for the day and what am I doing and so really it's just a you know going through the motions of of uh, the, the the turning off all the lights and turning off the air conditioners is is not is not high on the priority list. So I mean yeah. we we try to give people grace about that because it's yeah you know, it's it's nothing we can do about it, but you know oh this insulation <laughs> it would make such a difference. It would it would make it's actually interesting thing. I'm going to make a note and I'm going to discuss it at uh, at the next company meeting. <laughs> well, I mean, you can use it as a sales point, right? Especially yes, if you, yes. especially if you made an agreement with like a you know a vendor of yes. um, a vendor of insulation products, and yes. you know you could use it as an upsell. Oh, here's me. Yeah. So use it as an upsell. Because... Great idea. I'm actually going to use that. <laughs> but my my concern. Let's stick on. This is actually very interesting. Um, my concern would be though that because it kind of reminds me of the shrinkflation thing of oh the boxes are getting smaller but the price yeah. is the same and everybody just kind of eats it and doesn't yeah. do anything about it and so the other the thing that worries me is prices go up people just kind of say well you know that's, that's what it costs <laughs> no but that would be for shrinkflation like, I've like, never heard of that before no 
Really? Shrinkflation. That's a new one on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the, I know this happens. It has happened with butter, right? Butter. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Anything. And, mm. and milk too. Um, but so my concern is if the inflate or not inflation, uh, insulation thing were to be, uh, you know, on the news and, uh, you know, Japan time or whatever, like kind of just public news, yeah. it might not take off. But if you wanted to get, you know, in early and, you know, get some early wins that weren't kind of low hanging fruit, well, wouldn't the short term market, short term rental market, not be not a bad place to start? Because I would yeah, have landlords would have an interest in reducing those bills. Yeah, exactly. yeah, definitely. You know, I think um, what happens in Japan is, you know, unfortunately, Japanese have that shogunai mentality. Mm -mm -mm. So you know, uh, so they they're gonna be like, ah, oh, you know, shogunai ne. But well, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Then, then they will not, for example, put on aircon even in the highest heat. And that's when everybody is getting uh, heat. Heat stroke. Yeah. Heat stroke. Yeah. And, uh, or in the winter, on the contrary, then they use alternative forms of uh, heating up the house and end up burning up the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like, with all of the kerosene. Choking on petrol fumes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we have that burned down their house burned their house uh in october it was not even that hot yet so yeah i've heard countless yet. stories so of... i think with the japanese with the older japanese it might not have an effect but with the younger japanese you can actually appeal to them and then it all comes to the point of marketing how do you sell it mm -hmm. and yes if you can start with uh let's say short-term rentals uh or any, you know, then you can start with offices because offices are having the issues. You know, you have to, I am yet to explain to people in Japan that no, the, the lights in offices do not need to stay on at night. Yeah. You know. It's just one But then it looks like the company is busy and everyone's working. We interrupt this broadcast. I always wanted to say this. We interrupt this broadcast to tell you about Tokyo Family Stays. They're a short-term rentals company in Tokyo and they offer a home away from home experience, which is just perfect for remote working, quarantining, or if you just need summer quiet to hide away from the world. So they offer a variety of options for families, for corporate relocations, or simply if you're transitioning between homes in Tokyo. Now the properties are super comfortable, tastefully furnished, fully equipped with all amenities, and they accommodate up to 10 people. So really the only thing you'll need to bring with you is your toothbrush and maybe a change of clothes. They've got fast, unlimited wireless internet, dedicated workspaces, and fully equipped kitchens, and they're just a delight to stay in, a fantastic alternative to Japanese business hotels, which if you've ever stayed in one, you probably know they're tiny, they're noisy, fine for a night or two if you're on your own, but long-term or with a family, you'll probably feel you're in a jail cell very quickly. So if you wanna give yourself a sense of space and freedom by renting a real home with comfortable Western beds, including all the necessities like baby bedding, children's toys, high chairs, you definitely wanna reach out to Tokyo Family Stays. They've been at it for over a decade. They're a fully licensed minpaku or short-term stay operator. And as a special bonus for our viewers and listeners, they're also throwing in a breakfast basket upon arrival for anyone who books and mentions the Japan Real Estate Podcast or NTI. And not only for guests, if you're a property owner, you've got an investment property that you want to tweak for higher profits or a holiday home that you want rented out when not in use via short-term stays, drop them a line today, see how they can help you maximize your property's income. And again, as a special bonus to our viewers and listeners, they're also offering a free audit of your existing short-term stay listings without any obligation whatsoever. So feel free to reach out to them at tokyofamilystays.com. Well worth your visit. And again, if you're in the market for a family home in or around the Tokyo metropolitan area, Emil's your man. Don't be shy to reach out to him as well at emil.gorgies, G-O-R-G-E-E-S at tokyorealty.jp. Hey, yep. Blanca, a quick, quick question. Um, Tracy and I had a chat about a year ago, I think, about um, potentially renovating a, a, an apartment building with small individual one-room units into something that would be more profitable for short-term stay, so like two yep. or three LDK and so forth. And um, we were wondering, I think we sort of made some assumptions, but I, I, I'm not sure how correct we were. 
How much more expensive is it if you need to do that kind of work with a concrete structure as opposed to a wooden structure? Yeah, that's, uh, it, is, it is much more expensive uh, because the concrete, stru concrete structure is more difficult to break more uh, for the walls. Um, it's more to get rid of, right? Then to get rid of, of course. And right now the cost of uh, garbage disposal went up again. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that is also another cost. And then even if you are not destroying all the walls, if you just want to do something with it, or even we were uh, installing uh, uh, window shutters on uh, on the windows where the wall was uh, concrete, it takes much more time and more manpower to do that. So yes, the cost is uh, is much more when it's when it's a concrete business, a co concrete building. Of course, the building is better because you have bigger durability yeah. and it's safer when it comes to earthquake. But when you do uh, when you do a reconstruction or renovations or for concrete building, the price goes up significantly. Is there like a ballpark figure? Can we say it's going to be double or triple or fifty percent more, uh, rough roughly? Or not more than double the price? Or? I would not say not more than double the price because I am at this point, I don't know how much the garbage went up. Yeah. And it, because it also depends on the area. Yeah. I know I know Tokyo and Chiba went up when it comes to garbage. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Garbage disposal is something that I'm rather interested in because we deal with Akio, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it was funny because... So whenever I hear that word, I just immediately think, oh, like chairs and just personal effects and, you know, closets of clothes. And About just... two tons of concrete. <laughs> right. And so I, it, it took me a second to click like, oh, wait, no, you're talking about rubble. You're talking about demo disposal. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The rub rubble for a concrete house, if you were to demolish a mm. concrete house, and I know this because we've done the, we've done the numbers on a, demolishing a concrete house versus demolishing a non-concrete house. Uh, demolishing a concrete two-story house would come up, including the manpower and uh, removing the rubble and everything, to about 9 million yen. Yeah, it sounds about right. Whereas if you do that with a, a normal house, you are looking at... Two, three or what, right? Two, two three. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I what we've, three. we've received I estimates three. for that. Yeah. yeah, I paid three for mine for my my yeah. demo, my demo. Yeah. yeah, so you would do that. So you are looking at basically triple. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between double to triple the price for any kind of yeah. concrete work, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And it depends, like if it's just like the uh, outside walls are concrete, or if everything yeah. concrete. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've I've seen some good Renos, um, Ziv, where there's been you know a concrete structure on the outside but the inside walls are yep. you know normal wood, wood and, and plaster wood and yeah. drywall and they're okay and and that you can convert like a you know two rooms into yeah. into one so you know yeah. blanca why i say this is that you know you know as well is that when you're doing short-term rentals you get more money per square foot yeah. doing a two bedroom or a three bedroom than you would three small apartments of course because there's so many small single apartments in Japan, um, the price per night that you can charge is way less than and the management have the overhead same, too, right? Yeah, yeah, the same floor space, but as a two or three bedroom, and especially if you're converting something that's a a three, like maybe something that's like three one case, you convert that to like a two, like a two bedroom with two bathrooms, there's not a lot of places that have two bathrooms. Yes. So you could, again, charge more per night for that. You remember, you remember we had this issue uh, before the Olympics when I was looking for the units and for the clients uh, for Olympic Games. And yes. basically their biggest problem was that there were units with multiple bedrooms, but always only one bathroom and they yeah. never wanted that because they are like you know, the people need to move around the same time in the morning they cannot be relying on one bathroom morning mm -hmm. and so we're a family of three and it's an issue i can't imagine a family of six or seven traveling 
Yeah, or or people that you know kind of travel together but are not really related, so you can't even enter each other's bathroom. Yeah. So like working, like working groups, or um, yeah. So. But what is also very good in Tokyo right now is when you are already renovating a short-term rental space, if you can make it a picture perfect, picture pretty, then use it for a few hours as a photo shoot, a photo shoot rental space. Then you make much more money than actually. For the rental, we just paid sixty thousand yen for three hours for a rental space for branding photo shoot. So, oh, yeah, because it was wow. a pretty, it was a pretty space. Uh, we really liked it. We wanted we wanted that space because we needed an indoor indoor space for a branding photo shoot, and and this one was that. And then the price was like yeah, fifty six thousand, I think fifty six thousand for three hours. We do that down here in Yugawara, but it's. It's ten thousand yen an hour, and with goats. With goats. <laughs> Look at our website. I'm not joking. No, I. You know what? But the you problem branded with pictures with goats. With them. Them. Depending on the product, that would work very well for something. Yeah, but, but yeah. my husband would leave with your goats. <laughs> really want a goat, but, but like, no, you're totally right. The the rental space for photo shoots is an outstanding. <laughs> a lot of my photographer friends talk about this all the time. Um, yes. There's there's really good money in that. Yes. Well, how do I get it? How do I get a piece of this action, guys? Uh, I, on the li get listed on the spacey, guess, the spacey. I'll send you through through who I rent. I don't I don't remember the website of that. I can send you through whom I rent. Um, got it. Uh, it was what was it? My my space or something like that spacey, a spacey i think it is no 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 it was not spacey it, i think it was my I, I can look it up i can look up the no. link and send it to you no get doubt. it then put your pictures and it's like, funny because actual event space is not as expensive as that like i'm just looking into a few event spaces and you know they might be a thousand a day but you get you know the whole nine or ten hours or whatever you need no but this I, one hmm. literally because it was really really pretty really well done you know like light a lot of light big windows so great really good for photo shoots so specifically when you are listing your space for that you can choose you you choose what you can what people can do there if it's a meeting room like work from home you of course don't charge as much but if it's for a photo shoot and yeah. you have that kind of space, then you charge premium. It's, it's, a, it's a very boutique kind of experience. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Like, because most event space is like, so long as you got the money, come on in. Um, yeah. But a lot of these kind of smaller, you know, Airbnbs that are remodeled as, like, we're talking about photo shoot spots, they're, they can be kind of picky. Um, yeah. and they, they can also have a very specific use case, right? It's not just, you know, we'll rearrange the chairs for you and you can do whatever. No, um, hold on. You have to clean after yourself. You have to put it into uh, original uh, condition because if I wanted them to clean for me, they, their cleaning charge was 12,000 yen. I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, they got a great business. We're in the wrong business, guys. <laughs> uh, that's, that's thing, Tracy, I think I think you could actually easily got in there. Yes, I have to look at all these look at all these other alternatives. There's there's another um, uh, corporate relocations um, working from home company that's really making a lot of noise la lately, and I've been with them, so I've had a few bookings with them. That's quite good. So yeah, that's, um, that's an interesting, but but. You know, home rentals is just not popular domestically at all. So I'm still waiting for the borders to open. It's quite sad. So oh, we something's happening. We got our first relocation clients for the new company just now. The the people are slowly starting yeah. to move. I again. got my first yeah. I got my first one like uh, two days ago. So I was really I was falling over for myself. I was so excited to welcome them off the plane. It was yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's just... oh, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> One guys, like, don't get that excited. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long couple of years, Matt. <laughs> it has been a long, long couple of years. So yeah, mm. for everybody, hospitality. I'm not. I can't even. No, it's been grim. It's been very, yeah. very grim. Oh. yeah. And so you, you had your first relocation, Zip. Uh, the new company, yes. So the company that we do that helps uh, investors. 
buy into Japanese businesses and franchisees uh, setting up shops and then relocation for, I mean, they, they're eligible for a business management visa in those cases. And then they need That's help with That's a yeah. really great business, Ziv. Um, how's it going? Um, the franchise side of things is going really well. We're not mm -hmm. advertising it yet because we're just about to open the first shop for our first customer. Once he starts uh, reeling in the income, then we'll know that it all works and we'll start advertising. But the relocation, we were, we were kind of like preparing the infrastructure and just like waiting for people to come in. But there, yes, there's now starting to come in. So good stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and also Fukuoka and Saga Fukuoka? Prefecture. Sorry? Only coming into Fukuoka or, or anywhere? Uh, the that? relocation side of things is very hands-on. So we're starting that from Kyushu. Before we're going to start outsourcing it to other parts of the country, we want to get our uh, feet under us properly. Um, but Kyushu is opening up to international students, business travelers, and now Fukuoka and Saga prefectures have notified that they're going to be accepting Ukrainian refugees too. Um, oh, so we've right. uh, happily volunteered to provide relocation support free of charge to them because uh, they need it and we need the promotion. Of course. Can win. Um, that's, uh, that's very unusual to have. Like, normally Japan takes, what, two refugees? I know, right? I, I, was, I was shocked when I heard that. Yeah. Well, yeah. they took Fancy, didn't they? Mm. Mm. Uh. So yeah, what? The, yeah, they take. I think they took two refugees in last year. Two, two. Yeah. Strangely enough, apparently where I lived in in Iwate in Miyako City is hosting a Ukrainian refugee. And a Ukrainian refugee. A Ukrainian <laughs> refugee. And, and, Not and, even a family. My goodness. It, it might be. I actually. I know that there's some. There's at least one. It sounded like one guy. I'm not sure specifically, but when I when I mentioned this to, I was like, "Oh my God, wow, Miyako's stepping up to the plate." Everybody else though just said immediately, like, "In Miyako, like, poor guy." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird. Though. Emil's not here today, so we can segue into stuff that's not real estate. <laughs> it's um, it's weird that like with all of the uh, with all of the uh, abandoned villages and declining rural population and stuff, that would be the perfect solution for Japan to like bring refugees in or, or you know just people relocating make it a bit easier for them and just send them to rural areas to yeah. to repopulate the place that's what Australia does work wonders for Australia I, I think that's where th that's definitely kind of where our part of our business is heading uh, we've definitely seen an uptick in um, international investors as well as organizational investors uh, there's definitely things moving definitely interest even if they haven't come on board as clients you know we're keeping track of kind of the general trends in, in interest it does seem to be gaining traction um the problem though and i mean this is the perennial problem that we have to deal with is there still isn't enough uh accurate or granular details and information about the process about the reality on the ground about the price i mean about all of the things that we have to wrangle and say hold up not 500 bucks or like fifty thousand, but it's still cheap. Yeah. But when you say investors, what kind of what are they investing in? Uh in the uh, well, obviously they're buying the houses, but usually starting up business, more businesses focused. There's a lot of interest in Airbnb. There's still a lot of interest in kind of wellness related subjects. Uh, yeah. Yoga and hiking and climbing are kind of the big three. Um, uh, there's a really I don't want to talk about that one. Um, that one probably won't work. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's there's still a smattering of people coming in, um, but it's yeah, it it seems to be growing. And I I am I'm not one to be overly optimistic, so I won't say I'm overly optimistic. But I do get kind of a good sense that there's going to be a, a bit of a breaking point sometime soon in the what like the style or manner or like mindset behind investment such as what you were talking about with australia and just saying all right you know like nico right now for example is totally rotting uh and most people in japan domestic are not buying that place up but we're starting to get people who are saying hey we've heard about nico can you dig around in there and there are viable properties up there so yeah. it's really a matter of being able to again i mean this is the work that we do being able to de determine oh you said you want this Okay, let's find out if that's possible. If so, then we can move on. But my my question is, if you if you create if you turn a let's say you cr create a village of an you know an enclave um, in the middle of you know in the in Inaka, mm -hmm. what are the 
you know, what are the other what are the other things that people are going to do? You know, what what jobs are going to pick? I mean, yes, there's obviously all of the the, the jobs that need to sustain the, the people in the area, but there needs to be additional commerce to mm-hmm. support that. Yeah. What, there, there need what do you be, see as the what as as the draw card? I mean, there there really need to be, for lack of a better word, like Sherpas, right? Sherpas. Yeah, like okay, you've got a group of five people or whatever who want to invest in a village and you know build it out into an eco sustainable blah 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 with pickles and beer, craft beer and of and mm-hmm. ice. That's cool and all, right? It is doable, but the fact is, it's much more complicated than just getting a house outfitting it with pickling equipment or whatever um, and going about your business. There's it's that conversation we had before. You have to market the entire area, not just right. your little project. Right. Right. And so having people on the ground, preferably who are long-term members of that particular community who are able to, you know, hold hands, make introductions and honestly, like um, not live in, but, you know, be on call as the, uh, the, the guide really mm, um, yeah. something that is very val- extremely valuable i mean look i do know that there's some some industries that that really are needing people and needing new you know new blood and that's um you know i know someone who specifically looks after sake breweries and um the sake masters and she actually knows a couple of different breweries uh, and there's no one to take over the business. Like it's the traditionally family businesses and they, you know, the, the, um, the technology the, the, is shared through the, is shared from the master down. Um, but no one's interested in taking over that, that, that job. And they're, um, they're act, people are actively looking for someone who wants to come in and, and uh, do this work. And I'm sorry for really smiling, hard. but can you can you imagine a, a Japanese jisan buying nihonshu that was produced by Ukrainian refugees trained in the Japanese way out in the countryside? Forget about like, that, though. Market it internationally. That would market be market it internationally. Dumb. But, yeah, that but, that that, that but, would work. <laughs> but also, there's a whole bunch of other peripheral businesses that you can do as well. Like, you know, you could be bringing in people to learn and then t- you know export that technology out. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Specifically with regards to the sake thing. Um, yeah. Um, acquaintance of mine in uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, he runs the Tahoma Fuji Sake Brewing Company. Uh, and he learned, I forget where he was. It might have been in Kofu. Anyway, he trained for a number of years, was an apprentice at mm-hmm. the sake factory, uh, like a traditional one, took all those learnings, moved. He's from Seattle, moved back there, imported the equipment, right? Yeah um and set up literally in his garage right uh it in that sense i guess it's homebrew um but it's moonshine a, city yeah moonshine <laughs> yeah moonshine city right uh but he's licensed and all of these things um and i can imagine him being interested in that kind of stuff or maybe there's a tourism element of hey come with me sure. and tourism element, but especially, for it, I think. The, these places are you know the you know, often the the places are made in very remote areas because of the water quality, or um, you know, the the high, the the quality of the rice that they use. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you can really market whatever you know, spin anything you like, um, and any anyone will like give it taste half good. People will buy it. <laughs> Actually, I got, I got to run because the lo- the local mekon master just came by. So. Well, the Mik- there's a Mekon master. This is Yuga Water. There's like multiple Mekon masters. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, now, but Blanca, we have- just, just before we wrap off, I got one more question just in regards to this. Do you also do commercial renovations? Like if someone's yep. got an old house and they want to set up a beer or sake brewery or stuff yep. like that, yep. kitchen for a restaurant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do. We do everything. We do everything. So we are very flexible with that. Yep. We can like we can build up any business out of property you need that's so, fantastic so you're, you're going to give us your um website your social is that a mikan no no that's a, that's that's a, a mushroom that's a that's a money. gigantic local shiitake <laughs> oh absolutely oh I'll, give you, I'll give you my details um yes uh, please and uh yeah anytime you know uh what we do usually uh we set up a meeting at the property with the client we go we look there and they tell us what is their expectations or what they want to do with the space and then we'll tell you uh how about 
approximately how long it it's going to take because that's also one of the first factors people uh need to need to know when they are deciding and how much it's going to cost price, right? the time frame the yeah. the price comes later because uh, you know, depending on the material you want to use and stuff like that. But the time frame is also very important because uh, not always are people willing, for example, to live in a in a half renovated house or, you know, or people have a time frame that they want to start a business and yeah. need to start a specific. So the time frame is actually one of the very first things that we can tell you when we can start and how quickly we can finish. And then, of course, uh, then we talk about price because Understood. you know different materials are different different price uh, ranges. So, and different but yeah, we that we do businesses. And you've mentioned that you don't do builds and rebuilds, but are you maybe partnered with companies that can do that? With you managing as a bilingual project manager, or not yet? To be not honest, okay. it, it, it's one of the things we do have in a plan uh, for the future as our portfolio, because when we plan, we, uh, we plan those things as a next step, but we do not build from scratch for now. Okay, perfect. So thank, okay, you. thank you very much for coming there. on. Thank yes, you. goodbye, Matt. Goodbye. <laughs> bye, Matt. Bye, Matt. So, so Blanca, you know, Emil is normally here, and so, um, you know, we should have you back when Emil when is when Emil's on, because he he Emil is our local domestic residential expert. So he sells only in Tokyo, and nice. he sells um, either new properties or um, you know um, family homes, hand properties. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. family home, nice fancy family, family home. Oh, fancy. Yeah. I mean, nice family homes. <laughs> yeah. So the, and but he has a whole real estate company machine in his in his orbit so um you know i'm sure he's got a lot of uh renovation questions that would be really useful to people who are watching this so yeah i wouldn't um personally i wouldn't mind ex uh, expanding the panel i mean i don't know how available you are normally blanca but it would be great to have like a renovation expert on hand that we can actually talk to because we constantly ask these kinds of questions i'm um, mostly wednesdays are actually mostly free for me for now yeah so, awesome. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Well, I will stop the broadcast now um, and I'm going to stay on for a little bit. So, thank awesome. you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, that was again Blanca Kobayashi, Vice President and Co founder of Arc Reform, a bilingual renovation and home design company based in Tokyo, Japan. And if you've got any questions for Blanca or any other member of the panel about renovations, repairs, redesign, or any other topic that we regularly banter about, please send them our way. Or if you'd like to come on the show and have a chat with us live, um, recorded, not live, we're more than happy to have you. Don't be shy to reach out. Now, before we go, we're also as always going to tell you and also link to our other sponsors website. That's Hiroshi Shimizu, immigration lawyer and administrative scrivener. If you're thinking about moving here on a more permanent basis, or you're already in Japan on some sort of a temporary visa, and you want to switch to a longer term or permanent one, or if you're considering setting up a local company or a branch office of a foreign company and you've got any sort of business or visa related inquiries, or even if you just want to find out what your options are on any of these topics, feel free to contact Hiroshi Shimizu. You can find him at japanimmigrationexperts.com and he can help you set up a company, apply for any kind of visa, or just provide you with the best advice and extremely affordable consultation related to these topics. And he's already done that for many of our listeners. So feel free to reach out to him. Again, that's japanimmigrationexperts.com and you'll be well on your way. And that's it from us for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Japan Real Estate Podcast. Do share it with your networks and please let us know what you think. So leave us a short rating or review on the iTunes store, on Spotify, or just drop us a line in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode. We love hearing from you. Hope to have you with us again next time, and until then, have a great day or night ahead. Yoroshiku!